last week and totally freaked out when I played that song. It's not about the song, Deepak, but the language. It's the memories that come with it. Professor, you started a therapy two years ago, didn't you? Wasn't that too late? Anne's family thought that time will heal her wounds. They never really talked about that incident. She was nine years old when it all happened. Now she's 24 and still traumatized. Of course she is. The girl has experienced a devastating incident and wasn't allowed to process it. And suddenly everybody is requesting her to recall every single talk. Ma'am, I've been meeting her for a couple of weeks now, but there's no progress. Nothing. Did you scream yesterday? No. See, that's a progress. Thanks for having faith in me, Professor. It really means a lot. It takes at least 50 hours to gain a patient's trust. You're good in time. And besides, we are South Indian and familiar with the Tamil culture and language. That will help a lot for her treatment. Well, actually I'm from... Ah, forget it. Deepak, our aim is to reduce the post-traumatic stress she's going through. And I believe the exposure therapy is the most effective way to achieve that. But, Professor, for the exposure therapy to work, one must expose her to a real threat. But Anne wasn't harmed in the war. Yes, but she has manifested a fear and anxiety while she was there. Right. An incident that still haunts her. And now that experience has started to affect her physical health as well. So in order to prevent her from any future health damage, we need her to release the stress. And the first step to do so is by getting her to remember that phase of her childhood without associating it with emotional stress. She must tell us what happened. But I don't think she will. We are not expecting Anne to be fearless when she's thinking about that incident. We just want her to accept the fact that it has happened, without questioning it. When is the conference? Don't worry about that. What really matters now is Anne. Everything else is secondary. What do you love about life? Well, that it's full of surprises and miracles. You never know what the future holds. And you never know who will enter your life. Your definition of a best friend. I once had a best friend. We went to primary school together, to the third class. She was the first kid who had ever talked to me in school. The other kids uh, were a little bit distant, as I looked different to them. But she didn't care. To her, I was just, just Deepak. I promised myself that I would always be there for her. One day, she didn't come to school. No note, no message, nothing. I was later told um, that she moved away with her family. I never saw her again. Okay, 
they understand. Listen up, and I know that this must be confusing and everything, but... You know... Tomorrow, same time? Yeah, sure. See you then. Bye. Bye. You have a niece? Yes, Priya. She's five. How do you... Which language do you speak with her? Well, it's called Malayalam. Can you write too? Well, I can write my name in a couple of words. I can show you. Yes, it is. How come you know Tamil? Someone taught me. Would you tell me what happened? I reached Sri Lanka with my mom when I was seven years old. It was in 2004, I guess. She was employed as a UN aid worker there, in Jaffna. We lived in a small house there. And there she was. Super. I met her the very first day I arrived in Jaffna. We immediately became best friends. We were the same age. She taught me the Tamil language, Tamil culture. We danced the whole day to Tamil songs. We did everything together. How long did you stay in Jaffna? Just two years. 
You know, a few years before our arrival, the Sri Lankan government and the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam had signed an agreement for ceasefire. The civil war. One day, my mom had received information that the conflict is going to escalate again. We were told to leave the country immediately. The night before we had to leave, I decided to hide with Supa. I didn't want to leave her. I took her with me and we ran to a place where lots of people were crowded. Everyone wanted to leave Jaffna. Suddenly, I started hearing gunshots. I was holding her hand. We just kept running. Suddenly, Super's hands felt so heavy. Super got shot and fell down. I was still holding her hand. She looked at me. That night, I lost my best friend. And it was my fault. mom called from the conference in Geneva. She has already testified at the United Nations. You don't have to testify if you aren't ready yet. I can still remember my first school day in Vienna. I felt alone and different from all the other kids. I just wanted to leave. But there was this one little girl who approached me. She was the most kind-hearted person I had ever met till then. Her name was Anne. This little girl taught me that looks don't matter. That skin color doesn't matter. 
that cultural background doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, we are all the same human beings. When she left, I thought I will never see my best friend again. But I had promised myself that I would always be there for her. And that pure wish of mine brought her back to my life.